global chief economist and head of macro strategy at Renaissance Capital. Thanks very much for being with us, Charlie. So, first of all, what is your reaction to Obama's big jobs plan? Well, he delivered a bigger, bigger number. Uh, markets always like that. They were flagging 300, it came to 450, a good move. Uh, a lot of focus on tax cuts. Also, a chance then that it does get through Congress. Um, so I think this is a step in the right direction. Uh, it's, it's one of the things the markets would be, would be hoping for, but it's not going to solve all our problems. Well, talking about this seems a bit academic, though, if you don't think it has any chance of getting through Congress in its current form or anything near to it, which a lot of people believe. I think there is a chance. I mean, the headline figure is big, 3% of GDP. That's a big, chunky amount of stimulus. Um, and you know that there's going to be opposition, and the markets have lost confidence in U.S. political leadership and, and the belief that anything can get done. Uh, I would guess that Congress does have to face up to the threat of rising unemployment over the next 12 months if they cannot get the economy going. And when you look through this proposal, you can see obviously the Republicans are going to like those tax cuts. That's their big thing. And they've got, you've got infrastructure spending, which Obama is proposing $100 billion worth. They're probably going to object, object to that. You heard Michelle Bachman talking about how this has been done before. This is 2009 again. That was the stimulus package then. It hasn't worked. Why would it work now? Is there any credibility to that argument that she's making? Part of the problem is the infrastructure plans take a little while to get going. Uh, I know Barack Obama is saying that they will be quicker this time. Uh, the thing which struck me about the speech is when he turned around and said, why, why can China have new railways and new airports? Why can't America be up there with the best? And, and the, the reason is that Chinese debt, government debt's 45% of GDP, private sector debt's around 130%, total 175% of GDP. America's debt? Household, corporate, government, we're talking 300% of GDP. Bottom line, Chinese have the money to spend. Indeed they do. What about some of the interesting bits in the plan? Some of the things that we haven't seen before. Ways, creative ways of getting Americans back to work. What in there did you like? Well, there was something on housing which I thought was helpful. Uh, he's going to try and use Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to try and encourage uh, refinancing. Um, so the people who are having most problems refinancing at the moment are the ones who've once made a bounce check or something. Uh, these are the people who could see quite a reduction in their interest rates and therefore perhaps help their consumption, their position. And that's kind of the key, isn't it, to the economy right now? Because you have this disconnect between the health of corporate America, companies yep. with lots of cash, yes. but consumers with no confidence to spend any money that they might have because their housing, their, the value of their housing is falling. And they're concerned about their job prospects. How do you solve that? I, I'm not sure enough was done on housing. Um, you could have been really innovative and gone in and just said, we're going to buy up Florida's excess housing and knock it all down. Uh, Okay, it's a bit Keynesian. That would have been creative. It would have been creative, but this is the sort of thing that, that would have really made a difference. Consumer confidence fell so badly last month. It was second only to the month after Lehman's, uh, way worse than what happened after 9-11. Consumers really have lost confidence. And when, when they have, what do corporates do with their cash pile? Do they invest because of future demand, or do they stick it in U.S. Treasuries at 2%? And, and at the moment, they've been doing the U.S. Treasury option. How much of a concern is the structural employment issue? Bernanke's called this a scar on the economy. We've heard from a lot of American CEOs who say the people that we're interviewing do not have the skills that we need. Yeah, I, there was five percentage points of Americans got jobs through the, the Greenspan credit boom um, that had never had jobs before. The employment rate jumped from 58 to 63. It's dropped back to 58. And getting those people back into jobs now is going to be a struggle. What we saw in the 70s is after that shock, it took 27 years, I think, before unemployment got back to its pre-crisis lows. Let's talk about the global economy, since that's what G7 uh, finance ministers are going to be doing in Marseille. China, starting out with China and the inflation figures we saw today, easing. So the Chinese government is, is slowly uh, battling inflation without damaging growth too much. Is, are they doing a good job? It's making a difference. Could they be doing it quicker with currency appreciation? Yes, they could, but, but inflation is coming down. So what, what I think everybody in the market should be hoping for is that China can now stop this tightening they've been doing, the raising of the reserve requirements, and, and stop bringing them down. Um, and if they can start doing that because of falling inflation in China, maybe in Brazil, we've already seen a rate cut. Uh, maybe India stops cutting, maybe Russia follows through with some rate cuts in the next few months. We could see emerging markets begin to, to boost demand. So almost what you're, what you're saying is a sort of slight recession in the rest of the world and a bit of a slowdown is a good thing. It would 
it would, could reduce some of the commodity pressures that, that have been building up globally um, and, and emerging markets. It helps that shift of rebalancing, global right. rebalancing. Away. America needs to export its way to growth. So does the UK. So does Europe now. We all need a bit of... It's every need, man for himself. Well, we need someone to buy our, our goods. Uh, and it does look like China can do that. Brazil's been doing that. Turkey's been doing that. Uh, we need... We need to see more of so it. So potentially emerging markets could, could, well, they will be powering global growth because we're looking at a yeah. mild recession in the U.S. and in Europe. Is That's that right? That's what's threatened by the, the collapse of U.S. consumer confidence, the, the collapse of German IFO expectations. What that's telling us is the German industrialists will not be investing. It's telling us U.S. consumers don't want to be spending. Uh, so where's the, where's the good news? Uh, in China, relatively, there's some. Uh, in Brazil, relatively, there's been demand. So that could, be, that could pick up a little bit more again. How concerned are you about the European debt crisis? What's the next stage here? Well, we're all really concerned. Uh, it's, it's out there as the big, scary story. Yeah. But um, what would I, I think we might be heading towards fiscal union. Um, and I haven't been sure about this, but, but the talk in, in Germany in the last few weeks has been that they are thinking about putting forward a new treaty. Uh, which will be just for the Eurozone, excluding the EU, and it will be more governance and a bit of transfers, and just maybe in the long run, it, it'll secure the Euro for the long run, which but is what the is markets the thing. fear. This is the thing. It's going to take a lot of time to get to that yeah, point. Yeah, right. So what do the yeah. markets actually need to hear? Do they need to hear would a, a commitment, would, would that be convincing enough for them to would, stop worrying and driving bond yields up? I think we need the ECB still in the market to stop that happening, to stop the Italian... Uh, spreads widening even further, the Spanish spread. So we have, we've got to have the ECB still acting. Um, we'd love to see the ECB itself thinking about rate cuts. It would have been too early yesterday, but maybe later this year. Um, and then the promise that in the end, Europe does recognize that fiscal unions needed. Um, probably a bigger default, obviously, in places like Greece and maybe others as well. So when you talk, when you're a, you're a macro strategist, so what what do people do? What do investors do right now? I mean, we're looking at most everybody tells us we're looking at months and months of volatility, and and months and months where well we're going to see a lot of bad data prints out of the West as well. Um, so we're suggesting uh, yes, we know everyone's going back to benchmark, everyone's taking a, a safety first option, um, but there are defensive plays, uh, telecoms for example in emerging markets, uh, infrastructure plays which will be longer term. Uh, these are some assets which could do better. Uh, and I'd, I'd still say emerging market debt offers better returns than U.S. Treasuries at 2%. So I'm, I'm paid to say that, but I, I do believe it. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know that. Okay, Charlie Robertson, uh, Global Chief Economist at Renaissance Capital.